Hi guys, I'm Dr. Vaishnavi and I'm here to give you a brief overview of our RR Ignite notes, which is the rapid revision new notes, which is in the Q and E format. What is Q&A format? It's the question and explanation format. Now we've seen over years, we've read notes in multiple formats with images, with charts, with flow charts and multiple ways that helps you in retention of the subject very well. But we're talking here of rapid revision. What we want you to do is an active recall and not just passively understand the subject line by line or word by word. What we want you to do is just look at the question and try to close the book and recall the answer actively for yourself so that you are now confident that yes I have asked the question I have tested the answer I know this is the answer if you haven't been able to answer you know that's your weak spot mark that and you can come back to it and analyze even later that are you able to recall that particular concept for that particular topic or not so this kind of rapid recall is absolutely necessary in the last phases of revision to understand where you're good at and where you're not good at. And that is the whole purpose of bringing this Q and E format notes to you. Now, without me explaining more on this, let's have a quick view through of the notes so that you get an actual understanding what we have tried to bring to you on the RR Ignite notes. So I'm going to talk to you about rhinosporidiosis and rhinoscleroma, two important things that are commonly asked in examinations. We have learned this with multiple images. We have learned this in the theory format. I have given you a tabular column where I compare rhinoscleroma with rhinosporidiosis. So we've done all that in our prior notes and it's extremely important to learn it that way as well. But when we are in the last lag or the last, you know, last part of our learning here, we want to really analyze ourselves that do I actually recall all the concepts that were taught to me during the video lectures or not. So here we see that there's a first question. What is the causative organism for rhinosporidiosis and how is the infection typically acquired? So you're supposed to keep a paper or a book underneath the question to close the answer and just try to recall yourself. Now you will be able to recall. Yes, the causative organism is an aquatic protozoan, which is going to be rhinosporidium seaberry and the mode of infection is through water. If you've been able to recall this, you know Know that in your long term memory this answer is consolidated you don't need no longer have to waste your time on this so your revision is going to be quick and it is going to be effective now if you have the second question what is the causative organism for rhinoscleroma so we studied rhinosporidiosis parallelly we are seeing rhin rhinoscleroma and what is the bacteria responsible for it so we know it's a gram negative bacteria called as klebsiella rhinoscleromatis also called as fresh bacillus now, where are these two conditions endemic is your next question. Rhinosporidiosis is in South India, whereas rhinoscleroma is in the North India. So that makes your revision more faster. What are the characteristic symptoms and signs of rhinosporidiosis? Then you'll have to just put a paper below it and just try to recall what were the symptoms, what were the signs. Now, symptoms, you know that because this protozoa gains entry via water onto the mucosal surface or the skin surface, it proliferates to form a reddish vascular mass. Now, because there is a mass inside the nose that will cause nasal obstruction, difficulty in breathing, can cause sinusitis and because it is vascular, it can also cause bleeding and on examination, it is a red fleshy mass which will be seen usually in the vestibule of the nose and there are whitish dots on the surface which we call it as a strawberry mass. So you have recalled both the symptoms and sign for rhinosporidiosis. For rhinoscleroma, we have got three stages, atrophic, granulomatous and cicatrization stage. In the atrophic stage, as the name suggests, there will be drying of the nasal mucosa, there will be crusting, there will be foul smell inside the nose. Eventually, you will see that there is a woody hard granuloma, which is called as a hebranose. And eventually, during the phase of healing, there will be narrowing or stenosis of the nose, which we call it as stapid nose or the stage of cicatrization. So now you are able to clearly understand the symptoms and signs of rhinosporidiosis and the symptoms and signs of rhinoscleroma. Now, how do we identify rhinoscleroma? on microscopy and on culture. If you've asked yourself this question, close your eyes, able to recall in HPE, there were meculic cells, there were Russell bodies. That was what explained to me. Very good. You've been able to recall the most important point there and it can be cultured. Yes, this is a bacteria that can be cultured and the agar is going to be your McConkie's agar. Now coming to rhinosporidiosis, can we culture this? No. But what do we see on histopathology? We see sporangia with spores. That is something that we see with rhinosporidiosis. 
rhinosporidiosis. Now, what is the treatment for rhinosporidiosis? You are going to excise the mass and cauterize the base. So, very, very important excision of mass and cauterization of the base. Now, what is the treatment for rhinosteroma? What is the antibiotic regimen and duration? This is very specific and important question for you. So, we give streptomycin, tetracycline and rifampicin for 6 to 8 weeks. When is the treatment stop? This point you should be able to recall when two cultures are negative only then would you stop the treatment for patients who are having rhinosteroma. If the culture is positive treatment must be continued even beyond 6 to 8 weeks and you should stop the treatment only when two subsequent cultures are negative debridement of the tissue is performed. So, if you see these are very specific, there is no beating around the bush, there is a particular point that needs to be tested, that needs to be recalled. If you are not able to recall that main important point, then you mean that you have forgotten amongst the most all the important points, that one point and you need to mark that for yourself and revise it later. So, I hope this was helpful for you to understand on a small topic of rhinosporidiosis and rhinoscleroma, how we quickly recalled it, how we identified the most important exam based MCQ questions that could potentially come to you in various formats and make you prepared and may give you the confidence for your final exams. Take care and thank you.